this painting is pretty simple, but it's also, it's really a lot of fun. And I find it to be, you know, kind of calming and meditative. So it's, it's a type of painting that I kind of started doing a couple years ago, and, and I was doing it just as a way of playing with color and experimenting. I like to think about the painting as being kind of like, um, it's really, it's an abstract pattern, but, but it kind of feels as though you're, you're looking through the, through the grass out at something bright, or you're looking through to, to see the light. Um, and so I think about it sometimes as a way of finding clarity. And so, so there's both, you know, the way the painting feels to do, and then also kind of what it looks like. And, and they, they sort of mirror each other when, when I think about it that way. Um, but what I found is that these are really relaxing to do. There are low obligations. You know, it doesn't need to feel stressful or difficult to make. It's just something that you can, you know, kind of get there and play with it. And normally what I do is I start with the, you know, the warmer, brighter colors and kind of painting light to dark and using a few different shades of yellow. So I have both a, you know, a bright warm yellow and then I don't even remember what that was, um, but, you know, more of a, a brownish yellow and then some, some red and then also a pinkish purple, I guess, is what it is. So just laying down the, the warm colors first is a way of creating kind of an underpainting and a lot of this is going to get covered up in in a little bit here but this is just kind of a way of creating the warmth and I, I like the the way that colors come through and you see bright shining through calmer cool colors on top so what we're kind of doing here is just laying the foundation for that to take place in a few minutes and um, just just moving along and painting as we go it's also worth pointing out that at this point, I've kind of changed brushes. So I was using, I think that's a one inch flat brush uh, to start with. And I like it because it gives a nice, nice broad stroke and you can kind of cover a, a good amount of area. You know, and I don't know if you noticed, but I did wet the paper to start with, but it's not super, super wet. You can see that it's, it's still sort of wet on dry here, but not, not completely. So you get a little bit of blending and bleeding, but not a ton. Um, but now I've moved down to I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a half inch flat brush, but I'm just using that to create a little bit of variety and interest in the marks. And again, there's not any real rhyme or reason. It's just kind of going through and seeming what makes sense. I am trying to preserve kind of a lighter area up towards the top of the paper. And that gives it, you know, kind of that illusion of light and that is though you're looking through um, some sort of foliage or something out towards the light. At this point, I've pretty much finished up with the uh, warm colors, or I'm just sort of finishing up right now. And the next step is just letting this dry. So we're going to come in with some cool colors over top in just a minute, but, but definitely the painting needs to dry in between. Um, I don't want to end up with blending, and I'm trying to minimize any sort of uh, brown that I might get. So for this painting, what, what I have it taped down with is some of this uh, delicate surface painter's tape. And one of the challenges I have with that tape sometimes is the, you know, the paper wants to come up as it gets wet. And after it comes up, sometimes that tape, because it's so delicate and not super sticky, um, has a tendency to lift up or rise. I have found that if, if I um, put some weight on the painting in between, you know, wait for the painting to dry, then put some weight on it, it tends to flatten back out pretty nicely. Um, and you can avoid that. But if anybody has any tips or suggestions for keeping the tape from painting or peeling up or you know, lifting up off the surface, I'd be happy to hear that as well. But I'm just going to, you know, start coming in here with some blues and greens. And the idea is to make this look a little more natural or organic. And um, also, you know, still maintaining that light area up towards the top of the paper.
this is kind of the point where I decided that I was ready to start coming in with some greens. And um, some of the time when I'm painting, you know, I use a, a pre-mixed green as opposed to mixing my own. But in this case, I, I decided that I wanted to just mix my own and experiment with that and see what I could get out of it. Um, and I'm using the same yellows that I used for the underlayer as well. You know, so both that bright yellow and then the, the brown or yellow. Again, I don't remember what the colors are. Um, I'm also still fighting with the tape there, as you can see. But I, w I was coming in and, I, you know, the greens that I was getting weren't, you know, they weren't quite what I wanted. They were a little bit grayer than I expected. And um, I was just kind of struggling to get a color that I liked as I was going through this. And so there was a lot of kind of trial and error over on the right hand side there as I was trying to find what I want. And, you know, sometimes that's the way it goes. And, and there were even certain areas where I had painted stuff on the page that I just didn't like. And so I tried to you know, cover it up with additional layers or lighten it up with, um, you know, subsequent green paint. So that's kind of what's going on here, or what I'm thinking about as I'm going through it. Peeling up the tape is always one of my favorite parts of any painting. And so at this point, the, the paintings had plenty of time to dry. It probably dried overnight. And I'm just coming in and lifting up the tape. And if I use a stickier tape, I'm, sometimes what I'll do is I'll use um, a hairdryer to soften the glue on the tape. But in this case, this delicate surface tape um, is so, so delicate that it just comes off really easily. I mean, you can see that on the video as well. I mean, there's there's no tearing on the page and it, it just wants to come right off. One of the downsides is, of course, as we saw earlier, that it also tends to peel up and bubble up when you're trying to paint it. But, you know, everything's a trade-off. I'm also just going to come in and sign this painting um, and put a year on it.